offer. So our next uh, speaker is Dr. E. Babu. He is going to speak on leadless face maker. Dr. E. Babu is currently working as a senior consultant, interventionist cardiologist as Fortis Mala and uh, Fortis Mala Hospital Adyar. And he is also a visiting consultant at uh, Fortis Hospital Vadaparani. He obtained all his three degrees from JIPMA. He completed his FNB Fellowship in International Cardiology at Fortis Escorts Hearts Institute, Delhi, under the mentorship of Dr. Ashok Say. He is also honored with the following fellowships from various American and European cardiology organizations. He was appointed as a young national ambassador for EAPCI for India. Um, he has received the Best Young Scientist Award at TC TAP Conference at CO. Over to you, sir. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good evening. So I'll just uh, share my slides. I think uh, my slides are visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So I'll try to finish off uh, as early as possible because we are running late, I think. Um, oh, so uh, you take your 20 minutes, please. Yeah. Okay, sir. So this is, uh, I'll be talking about leadless pacemaker. In short, it can be uh, said as a wireless pacemaker. So, uh, this is a transcatheter uh, system, pacing system. So it's called transcatheter leadless pacemaker. It's something, it appears like this with some uh, tentacles uh, that is called hooks. Uh, and uh, this is um, no, the uh, device which is available currently. It is called Micra, which is FDA approved. And it is available in all countries in India also for the past four or five years. And uh, to just brush up uh, some few uh, slides about the pacemaker, uh, what are the common indications for a pacemaker implantation? So uh, I'm not going to go into the details, but in short, any bradycardia which is symptomatic or if heart rate is less than 40, pacemaker is indicated, a permanent pacemaker. And uh, patients with a, a sinus node disease, which is called six sinus syndrome, where they have a tacky bready uh, kind of arrhythmia can be there, sometimes low heart rate, sometimes high heart rate. And patients with AV node disease, so it can be a, either a complete heart block or a second degree uh, Mobitz type two AV block. So these are the common indications. Uh, for permanent pacemaker implantation. So to start with the history of pacemaker uh, uh, implantation. So first it was an external pacemaker, it started from 1958. Right now, so it will be connected uh, just like our temporary pacemaker, which is at currently. So only the wire will go inside and then pacemaker will be uh, connected from out, outside. Then um, by uh, 1960, then we got the implantable pacemaker and so many uh, changes have happened. And uh, from 2016, this Micra leadless pacemaker is available. And so the, the first patient used to be very big. So it will be like a device, like, you know, it's like an EC machine or something which is connected uh, with the patient. But now we have come to something very small in size. And um, I'll just give a brief uh, outline about the conventional pacemaker before going into my topic. So the conventional pacemaker has two parts. Um, you can see here. So one is this um, in the picture. So it is like a, a, a pulse generator, just called battery. Uh, in common terms. So it will be implanted uh, below the clavicle uh, that is in the infraclavicular subcutaneous uh, region. Then there will be a, a lead, which we in common terms say as a wire. So it is a lead which will be connected. It will go through the vein. So from the axillary subcutaneous, uh, subcutaneous vein, then SVC and RARV and into the RV apex or RV uh, septum, it will be uh, screwed. So it is a, like a mini surgical procedure and this will be a long lead which will be connected. This is how we have been doing for almost uh, over the last 50, 70 years. And this is uh, sometimes associated with the issues of infection and wound healing. Uh, and uh, usually it requires three to seven days of hospital stay uh, and uh, removal of stitches um, and depending on what type of technique you use after one week. So these are all needed and there'll be a small bump like thing which will be seen in the thing. So uh, cosmetically, sometimes it will not be good. And uh, young children may just rotate this, it's called tutelage syndrome, where they just rotate this uh, pacemaker. Uh, this is an X-ray view of a single chamber pacemaker. You can see there is one pacemaker, pulse generator, there's a wire which goes and then into RV. So, and this is how it will look. And this is a dual chamber pacemaker. That is, so uh, we have to paste two chambers. So one is, um, you know, one lead will be in the right atrium, other one will be in the right ventricle. So it can sense, right now, so atrial impulse can be sensed. A patient with a uh, uh, complete heart block, uh, a sinus node will be functioning properly. Only AV node disease will be there. So it has to just track that, uh, sense that uh, uh, sinus uh, rate, and then it has to track it to the ventricle and give it that. 
So for that purpose, we use this dual chamber pacemaker. So what are the complications associated with the conventional or traditional pacing system? As I said, there may be some pocket related in, uh, complication like infection or hematoma, sometimes erosion, the pacemaker will come out and then the pulse generator will be protruding out after some time. And it can be a lead related complication like a fracture, the lead can get fractured from the uh, um, some places and it can get dislodged. And sometimes there may be some, uh, there'll be insulation over the uh, lead, it can get uh, broken. And there may be thrombo uh, venous thrombosis and obstruction and it goes through the tricuspid valve from RA to uh, RV through the tricuspid valve. So the lead, sometimes the uh, tricuspid valve may not close properly and tricuspid degradation can happen. And we are, uh, uh, so these are the milestones from external pacemaker to intracardiac pacemaker we have come. Uh, so it, uh, it was external, then implantable, then it was a rate responsive. Rate responsive means uh, pacemaker initially was having only fixed rate. So it will be, if you keep at 60, it will be 60. But normally our heart rate varies when we walk uh, so heart rate will increase to some 80, 90, 120 or something like that or when we climb steps run. So it has to be uh, responding to the rate. So then um, that uh, 1986 rate response pacemaker came, then uh, it became a MRI compatible. Now we have this intracardiac uh, pacemaker. It's all miniaturized. So you can see this, this, this is a conventional pacemaker and it has electronic battery lead, everything. And all these things has been uh, miniaturized and that uh, uh, the fixation part is retained and then the battery has become small and everything is there as a small, tiny capsule now. There is no need of any lead. So it's something like this called a leadless pacemaker. And uh, it's a pictorial comparison. You can see this is a conventional pacemaker and how big it is. And uh, it's, uh, this is a micro leadless pacemaker, the RB. So, so small, it's almost uh, less than two gram in weight. Um, so micro is the world's smallest and lightest leadless pacemaker currently available. And it's from Metronic company and other companies are not yet, uh, I mean, it has not been FDA approved. This is the only thing which is available for the last four or five years. And it is delivered percutaneously, just like doing an angio or uh, cardiac catheterization. No need of any surgery and no need of interruption of any antiplatelet or blood thinner. And uh, it's implanted in the right ventricle. So it's a comparison. Uh, so we can see for the comparison of the Indian coin. And this is uh, no, it is very much smaller. Uh, it's almost 93% reduction size compared to a conventional pacemaker. And weight is less than two grams. It's only 1.75 grams, less than two grams. So hardly any weight is there. And battery longevity is also slightly more. It's MRI compatible and it's 12 years longevity. And success rate is very good because it's almost like doing an angio or uh, this thing. Uh, uh, cardiac catheterization, which is go and implant and come. I'll tell you how it is done. And um, long-term complications are lesser compared to conventional pacemaker. And uh, it is just the size of a pill. So there's a comparison with an augment in uh, capsule uh, tablet. So almost like that size only. And uh, so it doesn't have any lead. And the procedure is almost like just done usually from the groin, femoral uh, vein is accessed and the we go. And then in, uh, patient can be, uh, the procedure lasts only for 30 minutes and patient can be mobilized on the same day. So after six hours, they can start walking. And then there is no scar in the chest, so it's uh, cosmetically good for women who want that, so it will be good. And um, uh, it's almost like a daycare procedure. So you can do it in the early morning and then uh, like morning 8 o'clock or something, you can do it in late evening also, you can discharge the patient if you want. Or by 24 hours, you can discharge. One only thing is, is, still now it was a single chamber pacemaker. So we just go and then pace only in the ventricle. And then uh, now uh, recently, uh, from a few months back, Micra AV that is also has been uh, launched in India. Uh, it has additional atrial sensing also, so it can sense the atrial rate and then in contact to the ventricles. It's almost becoming like a dual chamber pacemaker. Soon, maybe conventional pacemaker may be replaced, uh, except for the cost issues. So, uh, but this is very good. And then, um, as I said, the volume is less than one cc. It's only 0.8 cc, and it's around 25 mm in length and uh, longevity I've said, and it's MRI compatible, both 1.5 and three Tesla. And the mode uh, uh, with the micro is uh, currently VVIR. That is, uh, it's a uh, sensors in the uh, ventricle, paces in the ventricle. So it's only a single chamber uh, currently. So these are the components. We can see one is that uh, it's a, uh, uh, this will be the micro pacing capsule. It comes with a delivery sheet. It's uh, deflectable, retractable. There will be some switches. So this, uh, this delivery sheet has to go inside this introducer. It will be a big introducer. Uh, inside this, we go and then we deliver this. These are the components. Uh, these are very simple uh, instruments, even compared to conventional pacemaker where we need scalpel and it's almost like a mini surgery, uh, cautery and all those things here. Nothing is needed. So only these devices. Uh, so I will just... Uh, Show you a small run this video once we so this is how we do groin uh, puncture then this uh, wire is passed from ivc ra into up to spc we park this wire 
then over this uh, uh, this lad uh, uh, introduced a sheath is passed. Uh, this inner lumen diameter is around 27 French. So it's a dilator. This this introduces sheath goes up to the IVC RA junction. Then um, this is a, a micra with the delivery sheath which goes into up to RA. Then it has to go into turn and go across the taxi valve into RV. So this is a deflectable catheter. So we have a button outside to turn the angle. And then uh, under the fluoroscopy through the trachea valve into RV, we reach that. Then, so and then there is a deploying device. Uh, once it's deployed, uh, we know the right ventricle myocardium has a lot of trabeculae. So it gets entangled into the trabeculae. So there are four uh, hooks, uh, which is called tines. So it will get uh, entangled. Even if two tines will get entangled, then there will be sufficient. So, and then we can uh, do a test, you know, just pull and see under the fluoroscopy how steady it is. And once we are um, happy with this, and then we check externally, uh, just like any other uh, pacemaker, uh, keep a band over that and then check whether the parameters are fine. Then if everything is fine, uh, there's a tether, there's a wire which is connected to the pacemaker here and externally, we cut it externally and then it goes all the way inside and then it's pulled out, that wire is pulled out, that's all. So it is all uh, deployed and then uh, it's all taken out. All the system, everything comes out, we just give compression and then patient can go home. So the distal end, just to give this, so it is all uh, the uh, micro capsule, what we say, the pacemaker is attached to the delivery sheet. Uh, the, over the micro, um, there is a sheet which is retractable. Once we go into the RV and we, once we are satisfied, we give some contrast injection, see we are in the trabeculae and our trabeculae is, and all these uh, hooks have got entangled the trabeculae under the fluoroscopy, we see, we pull and see, it's all uh, stretching in, steady in position. Then the outer sheath is retracted. So outer sheath is just pulled out and then the pacemaker is there, then, uh, which is connected. This is a wire, uh, it's almost like a thread, which is tethered here, which comes outside also. It goes all the way in the sheath and comes outside out to the handle. And then we cut there outside, then just it's released. And there was a global clinical trial on Micron. Uh, so it was in, uh, around uh, 2016, which was published in uh, European, uh, it was uh, present in European Society of Cardiology Congress. So almost no infection, zero infection has been reported. So it's very, very good it's because it's almost like doing an angiography. So nothing is exposed, we go inside and then place it. Whereas compared to conventional pacemaker, there may be sometimes uh, one person chance or something, it may be more also, our patient will come back with some infection. Uh, in a conventional pacemaker, a patient with ongoing infection, mostly we don't do. We try to treat the infection, then we do. But here, that is not a problem we can do. And dislodgement in this study was 0%, and battery life was around 12 years. So as we can see the conventional pacemaker is around 10 uh, cc here, it's around 0.8 cc. It's around 1.5 Tesla. Uh, it's uh, compatible with conventional pacemaker. Usually here, it's even uh, compatible to three Tesla of MRI. And uh, conventional pacemaker has a longevity of 10 years, and here it is around 12 years. What are the indications for a microglial pacemaker? Um, so because this we should know where we are to implant because till now it was all a single chamber. So any indication for a single chamber, which we call as a VVA pacing. So that's the same indication applies for micro. So the major you can see from the chart, this, uh, this was published in uh, article. So we, they saw how the physicians are uh, using the indications. The major indication was a bradycardia, but with a uh, high atrial rate. So ventricle rate should be low. When, and the atrial rate should be high. So sometimes it can be done and the atrial rate will be with the patient will have a AF and with a complete heart block and the ventricle rate will be low. So in those patients, these are the ideal patients. So atrial rate is high, only ventricle pacing is needed because of the complete heart block, then we can use this. And there are other indications when sometimes a patient will have some complex congenital heart disease, cyanotic heart disease, venous anomalies can be there, then we can use it. Uh, and uh, very less pacing is needed. Suppose, suppose we say that only uh, on and off pacing is needed. Otherwise, some uh, patients are not 100% dependent on pacemaker. Its own intrinsic system is fine, but intermittently it goes, then we can use it. Very advanced age, fragile, elderly people with multiple surgeries. They don't want any other surgery, then we can use it. People with uh, sedentary lifestyle, you know, somebody who's bedridden who's not going to be very active, just they want this, then it would be good. And uh, any with the, any other comorbidities or complication, everything, you know, it's better to use this. Now we have a dual chamber sensing mode also added to this, then it's more, uh, the indication will widen up. I'll be just showing some three cases uh, where we have used in different indications. So the first one was a 65 years gentleman. Uh, he was a morbidly obese. He developed complete heart block immediately post heart transplant. So he underwent heart transplant because of delayed cardiac And after heart transplant, his heart was new, but still he developed a heart block. That was because of his graft rejection. 
so he was uh, being treated uh, because of transplant he will be on immunosuppressive therapy and uh, he was also being treated for the graft rejection with high dose of steroids and everything and uh, just surgery was for transplant was just now got over and he has having already multiple uh, uh, he was on ecmo and so many things and there was a uh, huge scar in the sternum and in after that one more conventional pacemaker will be one more surgery there and he was also having some infection urinary tract infection so just we needed only uh, the pacing only for some time maybe uh, um, some uh, unless this graft rejection improves and after that his heart rate may improve with all this injection so then this microagulus pacemaker uh, came handy so from the femoral vein it was punctured this is a uh, catheter uh, that outer sheet comes into the ivcra vision then uh, deflecting then we can see here uh, i'm uh, so testing it into the in the right ventricle so in the right ventricle you can see the trabic lace a small contrast can be injected into the delivery sheet and then uh, we just look for the position so uh, whether we are keeping rv apex or septum and then slowly once it's there and then i just pull that out and this uh, uh, micro is being released actually still being uh, connected to the tether this wire may not be seen here but it will be seen outside it will be in continuity and uh, here uh, uh, we just pull and see all the we can see that all this hooks you know, are uh, uh, splaying splaying means it's all got entangled with the uh, trabic lace so it's stretching when we pull that so that means it's all steady so it's time to release that so once that uh, wire was cut then uh, this is all uh, implanted successfully so after that it was taken so and uh, the temporary pacemaker everything was removed so uh, this was uh, another lady so this is one interesting case uh, so it was a young lady 31 years uh, she was a nri uh, who came with a complete av canal defect uh, so complete av canal defect as uh, so atrial ventricular valve defect where they have some vsd asd and uh, mitral valve abnormalities all those things and this patient can develop eisenmenger syndrome she presented with eisenmenger syndrome so the pulmonary artery pressure was high she was all cyanotic and uh, again arrhythmias are common in these patients so she developed a atrial flutter and complete heart block so uh, atrial rate was high uh, ventricular rate was low around 40 and uh, usually this eisenmenger syndrome patients with complete avian all these kind of things will be a candidate for transplantation heart lung transplantation but she was not that much symptomatic to undergo transplantation she was not yet a proper uh, uh, candidate for transplantation so uh, she may uh, need that after many years so time being uh, to tackle this low heart rate so we can see this ecg so that uh, v1 lead is showing atrial flutter and ventricular rate if you see is around 40 so she was advised because of her, uh, um, uh, this all this uh, complexities of uh, congenital heart disease so uh, microglial space maker was advised because she need only a single chamber pacing this is a ct angiography uh, we can see so but uh, she had a intrahepatic interruption of ivc see uh, usually the ivc comes here and then it will go and join into the ra okay but here the ivc at the level of diaphragm is in, uh, interrupted then it continues as azygous vein and goes into the svc and then drains and then comes down so ivc is running all the way up to uh, svc as azygous vein so at the liver level it is all interrupted and then it's very difficult to go in this anatomy so is Uh, venogram was done venogram usually it goes into the ra but it's not filling ra is not filling directly it going above and then the dye is coming this is the course of the one wire uh, it passed and then uh, uh, to see what is that uh, so it goes into the this is the course of the catheter ivc nasogastric vein svc ra rv then it goes to the pulmonary artery so it's almost like uh, going as exact way uh, and this is all large sheet um but still the patient wanted and then uh, okay we tried and already there was one case which was reported in the earlier in the literature and this is second such case which is done in interrupted ivc um globally so uh, the outer sheet uh, the, no that that uh, what is that uh, uh, it is almost 27 french sheet and the micro delivery catheter is a 23 french so with this came up to here into the azygous vein then this delivery sheet just maneuver this with the 23 french with the difficulty and then uh, then contrast injection uh, was tested and we are very close to the trabic lay and some of it was uh, we could implant this so the sheet was pulled micro implanted and finally here micro is being released till the space maker so this is how the patient is there. so this patient has not undergone any surgery so it just doesn't have any external device everything so this is a lady who was waiting for a transplant who will need transplant for many years but until then this will be helpful for her Uh, the atrial rate was high, medical rate was low. 
the uniqueness of this case is maneuvering this uh, large uh, sheet a uh, delivery catheter this challenging anemone and then uh, challenging anomaly so transformational approach was taken but neck vein already she had some jugular sheath and all those things and it was all infected from the previous uh, procedures from the cat study so we didn't want to go with that um, this is uh, another uh, case which was done recently uh, it was a 75 years fragile elderly man very around 40 kg something like that and he was a uh, under he had underwent angioplasty recently uh, maybe some six months something like that and he was on antiplatelet he also has on and off bleeding hemorrhoids he had undergone some procedures for that already he developed complete heart block so ventricular it was around 40 so it's approximately i'm writing 40 so maybe 42 or 30 or something like that and then uh, he requested for ultra short stay in hospital because it was a covid pandemic covid pandemic and then he didn't want to stay for long he was a very um, highly educated person and then with busy social life and doing other things so writing books so he didn't want to stay in hospital and he was very much worried about covid so and then we uh, because of the age and fragility of everything so and then we gave this option and he accepted that after knowing that uh, uh, about this lead less space maker he immediately was very happy to undergo this and then procedure lasted uh, around some 20 25 minutes and then uh, without interrupting antiplatelet so antiplatelet was going on so unlike a uh, conventional space maker where we stop this and then overlap with the heparin sometimes in emergency we don't stop it but usually it is done like that so because other bleeding will be there we have to use cautery here uh, patient was discharged the morning it was done and then overnight he stayed one day in ICU the next day morning he was uh, discharged went home happily so the take home points uh, which i would like to say about this is that is a transcatheter leadless pacemaker it's called micra it's the world's smallest and also lightest pacemaker there are no leads so everything is incompatible in short it's only like a battery or a pulse generator or the con con compared to the conventional pacemaker it's just the size of a pill so almost like a size of an augmented capsule uh, tablet uh, it weighs less than 2 grams so you don't feel like that and then uh, no scar on the chest uh, it's all uh, uh, mri compatible and then um, pass so fatigue is good and then 0% infection rate that's what we want so don't need to stop antiplatelet no need to wait for infection anywhere in the body suppose a leg infection is there still you can do this compared to a conventional pacemaker and procedure time is only 30 minutes and it's almost like can be done like a day care procedure in a, a straight forward case it takes a maximum one day uh, 24 hours hospital stay thank you thank you dr babu for that uh or explaining about the newer uh, technology available to us thank you so much are there any questions to dr babu can i ask a question what is the Please cost sir. of this uh, micra pacemaker what would be the cost dr babu what would be the cost of this uh, pacemaker hello yeah What did Bear Sir was asking about the cost? Yeah, of yeah. The Sorry, there was some audio audio issue. Yeah, please no can you just repeat the question. Yeah, please what repeat the question. What is the cost? What is the cost of this micro pacemaker? Yeah, so it's almost it comes to uh, the device cost is almost some eight point five lakhs, including the GST, and then uh, with the procedural cost added, it may come to close to ten lakhs. That is the cost is, is more uh, ideal uh, conventional. Uh, ideal conventional dual chamber pacemaker which is mri compatible with the current uh, latest technology will be okay. amounting to 4 and 1/2 lakhs or something like that is this micra compatible with mri as well uh, yes sir it's all mri compatible uh, up to 3 teslas it is mri compatible and when you pass through airport security it wouldn't go off and, and no 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 so it's like any other pacemaker usually it will be written in that uh, security the first yeah. cable there uh, all pacemakers are allowed so it's not a problem for that okay and then so it's not to be a problem and because it's all mri compatible and in uh, conventional pacemaker we have either mri compatible or non mri compatible here it's everything is mri compatible so all bluetooth enabled and uh, it does everything all this latest technology is incorporated why bluetooth enabled so that you can monitor no for checking uh, monitoring for monitoring yeah. okay. there is a uh, remote monitoring nowadays even for other pacemakers it has come so there will be uh, even uh, patient will be given after that on small uh, like a handheld phone or something like that it will be placed in their uh, home when they come inside the room they want to just they have to be there for a few minutes once in a week or something for two minutes or three minutes it will record everything and if anything uh, if they feel something abnormal they can come to close to the device it will uh, convey to a centralized customer care something like that so for example the metro admin company has a global uh, wide customer care so that will recognize if really something is abnormal then it will be immediately alerted 
uh, to the physio to the patient that whether they have to go and meet the doctor or something like that so they will be yeah, some of the latest cars have that so i guess humans also yeah. have to have that <laughs> yeah. so it's not like they have to worry whether to go and then take the ecg or something when they go to that that immediately that, that's available 24 hours that's called remote monitoring so that is enabled for that also okay. thank you sir